first met John, he was wearing speedos. And he looked amazing. <laughs> when we were on holiday one day in Suffolk, we were on a little boat having a brunch cruise. We were having a cuddle up on deck and he proposed. And we started to plan our wonderful wedding. When John called me on Christmas morning, he said he was driving himself to a hospital. He couldn't see through one eye and he had a really, really bad headache. My son and I had been up a couple of hours and we'd done presents and Cameron said to me, Mum, you're marrying him for a reason, just go and be with him. And so I went and met him at the hospital. At the time I thought he was coming for a cuddle, but he got heavier and heavier. And eventually I flopped him back into his chair and just looking at him I knew feel or move anything in the right hand side. He couldn't talk, he couldn't write, he had no way of um, expressing yes or no. There were many times John wanted to give up, especially when the pain was bad. And I'd just sit and hold him and then he'd lift his head and he'd say, shoot me. And he really meant it. And I told him that he'd decided he was having four children and he had to fight for his four children. And he's brilliant, he just bucks up and gets on with it. Paula is everything. I can't um, give up for her. Oh, yeah. John's attitude, it can't be beaten. I do remember sat in physio one lunchtime and one of the physios, she's yelling at him, John, it is your leg, own it. And she's yelling at the top of her voice. And then all of a sudden she says, that's it. And he'd done it. He'd activated his thigh muscle when he was standing on his own. Communication wise, it's been slow. We got the word yes within the first few weeks and the word no. I know what I want to say, but the words can't. <laughs> I can't remember a decision that we were still gonna get married on the 1st of June. I think I might have just carried on as planned. By the time we got married, John could copy his vows. And every time he was managing a word, I was doing what I always did when we did therapy exercises and I was giving him a kiss. <laughs> there wasn't a dry eye in the place. A few months after that, John was discharged from speech and language therapy. He couldn't tell me stories. He couldn't give opinions and tell me why he loved me. And that's when we found research. Before my stroke, I was head of engineering at Anging Water. I know I couldn't work, so research was thing. John's taken part in maybe a dozen research projects and he wants to help. These, these people are the future of stroke recovery. And if John can help by being a bit of a guinea pig now, it's worth it for our children. John's an inspiration to everybody around him because of his attitude, not letting it beat him. I'm going to steal the words of my eldest stepdaughter. And when um, the two eldest stepchildren, when they were little, John used to say, the lion might be big and strong, but he isn't as strong as Emily and Tom. And Emily changed it. And she said, the lion might be big and strong, but he isn't as strong as my dad, John. And I think that sums it up beautifully.